Hey everybody, this is Mr. Samudio joining you from my home studio and office. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel and staying with me as we go through this shutdown and try to do some music together. So I've already posted a video about Irish music and some help, a tutorial video for our theory workbook. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a composer, specifically a composer, a Broadway composer named George Gershwin. But before I do, I want to let you know that any of the videos that you watch and then do a little bit more research on the same topic that the video is about and write me a one page report on it, I will give you extra credit for your fourth quarter music grade. So just so you know that you can submit it to me by just sending me an email and send the paper as an attachment, a word document to the email and I will reply letting you know that I got it and um, the extra credit will be recorded with your fourth quarter grade. So that goes for any of the videos that I post um, about world music, which I'm gonna post more about world music and any of the composers. So today I wanna to talk just a little bit about George Gershwin, probably one of the most prolific songwriters uh, for music theater, musical theater um, in the last century. On February 12th, in the year 1924, concert hall in New York City that had never been filled with the sounds of anything but classical music was about to be filled with jazz, thanks to this man. Some people in the audience were very skeptical because jazz was looked at as a lower class form of music, and many people believed that it didn't belong in the concert hall at all. To them, Jazz was unpolished and it belonged in the streets and in the bars. Other people were tremendously excited and thrilled to be a part of what they considered to be a historical moment where popular music from the streets could be contained and it could be polished and put into a concert format. The performance, which was called Experiment in Modern Music, contained a variety of orchestrated popular numbers and near the end of that concert in 1924, there was a piece of music by George Gershwin that was premiered. It was called Rhapsody in Blue. And as I started this video, I gave you just a few seconds of that to listen to. And in fact, that night at the concert, George himself was at the piano playing the piano parts. And the concert was a huge success. And the man who helped to make this all popular was born in Brooklyn, New York. He was born on September 26, 1898, to Russian immigrant parents. And he began writing popular songs as a teenager and studied composition and orchestration, which was a study that essentially was gonna last his entire life. He achieved his first success in 1919 with Swanee, which was a song made famous by a singer named Al Jolson. In the 1920s and early 1930s, George wrote many musical comedies, things that today were really the beginning of Broadway musicals, and most of them met with great success. Here's three of them. Um, Funny Face, Crazy For You, and Girl Crazy. He wrote musicals that made people laugh, and that were about topics like life, relationships, and politics. In fact, he wrote one political musical called Of The I Sing, which was about the presidential elections. This musical won a Pulitzer Prize, becoming the first musical comedy to ever win this honor. Many of the songs from these and other musical comedies have remained popular favorites, such as the songs Embraceable You, I Got Rhythm, which many of you have learned with me in class, and it's wonderful. Fascinating Rhythm and a song that maybe some of you have even auditioned for shows with if you're into musical theater, and that is Someone to Watch Over Me. Most of the songs written by George Gershwin had lyrics written by his brother Ira. This is a picture of George and Ira together at the piano. So George was the composer. He wrote the music for all the songs. And Ira, what is known as the lyricist or um, the person who writes the libretto, which are the words for the song. So most of the time, 
Um, those are two different people, and most of the time, um, the lyrics or the libretto is written before the music is written. It's, it's usually not done the other way around, though sometimes we have an exception to that rule. George Gershwin also wrote more serious music. In 1924, he composed one of the most popular pieces of American music ever written. We've talked about it before, Rhapsody in Blue. In 1928, he composed An American in Paris, which met with immediate success. A work that did not meet with immediate success was his 1935 folk opera known as Porgy and Best. It was a romantic and a tragic play, and it was written for an all African American cast. But as the opera was performed worldwide by the touring African American companies of the day, it began soon to meet with acclaim. It now ranks as the most popular and successful opera ever written by an American composer. Able to compose artfully and effectively in a wide range of styles, Mr. George Gershwin made musical history throughout his short musical career. George Gershwin is remembered as one of the greatest composers of contemporary music in the entire world, and he passed away in 1937. So for those of you in middle school who just finished up a unit on musical theater, all the things that we talked about, all the positions, all the different uh, ways things are done, none of that would be made possible without men like George Gershwin and his brother Ira Gershwin, who were writing all these wonderful musicals for performers to uh, entertain us. So just a little bit about George Gershwin today. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're staying safe, and I hope you're staying healthy. And um, again, if you take more time and research any of the uh, topics of the videos that I'm creating right now and write me a one-page report, email it to me as an attachment, and I'll give you extra credit. So I will talk to you later. Have a great rest of your day.